Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. In past lessons, I talked about how to make a question in English. It is very difficult for some students. However, there are some students that don't know how to make a simple sentence. There are three simple questions you need to ask yourself before you make a sentence. These are, do I want to make a positive or a negative sentence? The second one, what tense do I want the sentence to be in? And the third one, is the main verb a transitive, detransitive, or intransitive? Well, there is a lesson for these three types of uh, verbs, so, but I will tell you what they mean. Transitive is a verb that takes an object. Detransitive is a verb that takes both an object and an indirect object. And an intransitive verb, they are action verbs and do not take direct objects. For example, go, arrive, play, etc. However, let's make a sentence, a positive sentence using a transitive verb. And in this case, I chose the verb to paint. So, the example is, he painted a table white. So, let's analyze the sentence. The first thing that we need to write in English, in a simple sentence, is the subject. In this case, it's a pronoun, a personal pronoun, he. Then, we have the verb. In this case, it's a regular past tense verb and paint, so we add ed to make it into a regular past, paint it, and as we said before, it's a transitive verb. Why? Because it takes an object. The object, in this case, is a table. So this is a direct object, a table, and then white for more information. So white regarding here, we, we talk about white because it is related to paint. He painted white, the table. He painted what? The table, what color? White. So let's look at another example, adding more information. He painted a table white on his driveway last night. So we have the subject, and in this case it's a pronoun, personal pronoun, he. Painted is the past of the verb to paint. We said it's a regular past, so painted, and we add he did, I said. Then we have the direct object, which is a table. Then we have more info, white. Then we have where, on his driveway. And then we have when, last night. Now, when can go even uh, before, so at the beginning of a sentence. Last night, he painted a table white on his driveway. Um, let's look at a positive sentence with an intransitive verb. And in this case, I chose the verb to talk. So we said that intransitive verbs are uh, action verbs and they don't take a direct object. So let's look at the example. She talks for hours on the phone in the evenings. So she is the subject, so the pronoun, personal pronoun she. Then in this case, we have a, the verb to talk and to talk in the present simple, third person uh, singular. So we add s at the end of the verb. Then we have four hours which is more info. So she talks for hours, and then the more info here uh, is related to the verb, right? More hours, talking for hours. Um, so talk for hours on the phone, where on the phone, and when in the evenings, okay, right there. Now I'm going to erase this and we're going to look at other examples. Okay, let's go over the next example. Positive sentence with a detransitive verb, give. They gave Frank a hundred dollars 
to house sit until they came back from their holiday. So I repeat, they gave Frank a hundred dollars to house sit until they came back from their holidays or their holidays the same. So they is the subject, is the personal pronoun, okay? Then we have to give and the, is an irregular verb. So gave in the past. Then we have the indirect object, Frank, somebody receiving something, so Frank. And then we have the direct object, $100, direct object, so what? And then the rest, so I, I wrote why. Why did they give Frank $100 to house it until they came back from their holidays? This is the, uh, the answer to why. So let's um, go over a negative sentence with an intransitive verb, and in this case, be. Be is also considered a linking verb. There is a lesson on linking verbs, so if you wish to watch that lesson, you can click here. So the example, I haven't been to Costa Rica yet. So I is the uh, personal pronoun, so it's the subject. Then haven't been, so auxiliary plus not, because we're talking uh, about the present perfect. Then uh, been, which is the past participle of the verb to be. Then we have where, to Costa Rica. And then when, yet. Yet usually goes at the end of the sentence and usually for a negative sentence, but not always. There, there are always exceptions. So another example with a negative sentence and with another verb, and in this case we have a, a phrasal verb, to show up. So, she didn't show up for the party last night. I repeat, she didn't show up for the party last night. So, she is the subject, so the personal pronoun. Didn't, auxiliary plus not, we're talking about the past simple. Then the phrasal verb and is the base of the verb because we already have an indicator of the past, which is did. Then show up, show up, appear, for the party, for the party, more info, why, and then last night, when. When, last night, can also go at the beginning, so it's a time expression, last night. Um, so show up for the party, in this case, is an intransitive verb, right? So it doesn't take an object. Now, number five is a, a sentence that I'm going to go over in future lessons uh, because it, it gets more complicated. Um, a sentence can have many clauses. We have a sentence here with three clauses. So let's look at the, the, the sentence and then analyze it. When the bus came to a halt, to come to a halt is an, is an idiom, it means to stop. They left for the next city, the sentence continues, this is the second clause, where they had planned to stay the long weekend. So let's analyze the sentence. When is a conjunction, then the subject here is the bus, then come to a halt, so came to a halt is an idiom. Then we have they, which is a, a personal pronoun and is the subject. Then we have an intransitive verb, leave, and so the past, uh, the past of the verb to leave is regular, irregular, so we uh, say left, and then for the next city, where. The next clause is the conjunction where, then uh, the subject, they, which is a personal pronoun, then the auxiliary had, plus the past participle, planned, planned, and then more info, to stay for the long weekend. More info and, if you want, when, right? Now, I wrote numbers here, you can see. So for the first clause, this is the, the first, consider the first most important clause, it, it identifies the main clause. 
So they left for the next city. This is the main clause. So you need to know your main clause to understand the rest, right? So they left for the next city. This is the main clause. Then the adverb clause of time modifying the verb, the main verb to leave. So this would be the adverb clause when the bus came to a halt. When the bus came to a halt is the adverb clause. It modifies leave, the, verb, the main verb to leave. And then number three, right there, is the adjective clause, qualifying the noun, which is city, this noun, city. So they left for the next city where, so the city where, they had planned to stay for the long weekend. I'm going to go over this in future lessons, so don't worry, it's a little bit complicated, but with a lot of exercise you will understand. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you like to share the lesson, you may do so. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You will get a lesson the following week. Having said that, have a great day and enjoy uh, English. Take care. Bye-bye.